This is episode five, and it's the same painting as before, the Vernigar Rota painting. And we made some progress here. We're still filling in some of the main washes, the main colors in the painting, and then coming over them with a second layer to build up some depth and some character in, in the various pieces of this painting. So I hope you enjoy it and have a lot of fun. See you soon. Okay, so we're back. And now we're trying to work in some of these windows. You notice I'm using a square brush that makes it a little bit easier to do this. My hands are not as steady today as they once were, which is an issue. attention to what I'm doing, it does work pretty well. pretty good. <clears throat> I definitely think that if you need to make something that's square, using a square brush is usually better than a round one. There are some exceptions. like fan brushes are real good for trees and clouds and riggers are extremely good for painting thin straight lines I've been thinking about doing some paintings either in Colorado, where I lived for eight months before I came here, or some jungle stuff. Unfortunately, I did some drawing when I was in the army in the jungle, but I never really did any painting. I don't think I'll be going back there anytime soon, although you never know, it's always possible. I have an acquaintance in Nicaragua I'd like to visit. Maybe if I win the lottery, I'll go.
Now, the smart thing to do here is to make these windows in the distance lighter than the windows that are up close. Yeah, for me, I gotta get right down on top of the painting to do this. coming along quite nicely. Um, I guess we should work on these. See here, you can really see it. Using a square brush makes this whole process a hundred times easier. And having a good underdrawing also makes it easier. Need a few minutes break and I'll be right back. And we're back. <clears throat> so we're working on these windows here. I went for a walk earlier. It was cold outside here in Bavaria. Just a few degrees above freezing. And it is an extremely gray day outside.
frankly, it looks like it's going to snow. That'd be okay. Snow would be good. If we had a real snow, like 10 centimeters or 30 centimeters, that'd be cool. But so far this year, we have not had one of those. And a little light dusting now and then. But that's really about it. <clears throat> See, now this is the thing. The more detailed the painting is, the more time it takes to put it together. Although, as I pointed out, if the drawing is good, it goes together a lot quicker. As I recall, when Van Gogh was doing this, he spent the first two years just drawing before he painted anything. And that was his plan. He was going to draw first and paint later. And probably a really good idea. <clears throat> and if you look at Van Gogh's work, Sure, I mean, he did stuff like Starry Night that changed art forever. But when he started off, he was pretty much a traditional landscape artist. And that sort of, like, brings me back to the basics. The, the people who are good, you know, you look at Picasso. And Picasso could actually draw. I mean, yeah, he did things that were really surrealistic and different. But he could also just draw beautiful human figures. And as far as I'm concerned, an artist should be able to do some basics. They should be able to draw a scene like this in perspective. They should be able to draw a human face that's recognizable as a human face, male and female. It, maybe it doesn't have to be a person that you know. That's a lot harder got to get the details absolutely right. A millimeter left or right can make a huge difference. They should be able to draw a person. They should be able to draw a human body. And do it fairly decently. And that's, that's the basics. What, what you do after that's your business. And, you know, if, if you don't want to do that, if you just want to paint abstract art, hey, that's cool too. I'm just saying I think you'll benefit more if you learn the principles that everybody has learned for many, many years, for thousands of years, I mean, if you go back and look at the statues from <coughs> ancient Greece, <coughs> far older than Rome, or Egypt, they obviously knew how to draw. They understood perspective. They understood proportion. They understood how, how to do stuff like that. It wasn't that difficult. <clears throat> it's never been that difficult. Alright, now. A bit of detail here. I need to go get the drawing computer, and I'll be right back. <clears throat> and we're back. Now, what do we need to do here? I think we need to take this brush and clean it up a bit. for some of these red roses. I 
I just decided this is not the right brush for that. It's kind of a filbert brush. So I'm going to try something else here. Um, I'm using a little bit bigger brush here. My intention is that, yeah, see, I can paint these things quickly like this. here where I'm doing these flowers yep here you can sort of improvise there's definitely more room for it here This here is going to be hard. <clears throat> this is easy. That's tough. <clears throat> okay. Now. I made a sort of an error here. Got to put these in the drawing. Now there is a way to do this in perspective. It would make sure these things are absolutely correctly aligned and the right distance between each one. All I'm doing is very slightly increasing the distance every time I add a new one. You can be super pedantic with this, or you can be a little looser. When I'm painting, I like to be a little looser. If I'm doing a pen and ink drawing for architecture, then yeah, I'm real, real precise and I follow all the rules. I think there's... Depends on what effect you want to achieve. Um, here, I'm doing a painting. It's supposed to be what it is. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be alright. Now, where did I put that thing? Oh, I put it over here. A bunch of darkness behind these things. This foreground here is going to need a lot of little detail to make these rocks look like rocks.
Okay. <coughs> Getting a lot of little dots there, probably. Now here, we can use one of these, I think. It's a big filbert brush. Covering a big area, use a big brush. And here I don't have to be nearly as precise. These trees need to be darkened up. That needs to be a little bit of sky in there. We can do that right now. Probably use the same brush to get in there and do it. Okay, hopefully that'll dry down a little bit. Might have to mat, mat, add a little bit of blue up here, but that'll be okay. All right, what do we have to do next? More brown. And some darker colors probably. Now, this needs to have some boards here. They don't have to be super precise. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit, worked on a bunch of details here, and then I'm going to go back in and add another layer. The trees need to get a lot darker, I think. But it's, it's looking nice. I like this. This is looking real good. 
All right, we'll see you in a little bit.